Hey Canucks fans, all is quiet on the Canucks front for now. I'm Canuck Clay, I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. This is my Canucks take on one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Monday, November the 15th. If you're new, here's what you should do. Hit the subscribe button now for daily Canucks insight that's positive, timely, and trustworthy. And as always, this vlog is brought to you by Perform and Transform, personal training and weight loss. Sign up now for a free seven day trial. Use the link in my video description below. Thanks to everyone who joined me for my live stream last night. We went for two hours. We went for over two hours. We started at 10 and by 12.05 we wrapped up. So a lot of fun. The second hour is a little more casual, less hockey talk and a little bit more goofy. Loopy Clay, as many of you know me as. Uh, I think Loopy Clay does come out from 11 o'clock onwards. So a really good time. And somehow I got tricked into or promising that on Wednesday night, if the Canucks lose against Colorado, I will go for one hour. But if they somehow win, I will stream for another two hours on Wednesday night. But let's worry about that later. Also, I want to say really quickly that um, move my Ask Me Anything vlogs from the weekend because of my pub night and, and all the busyness that went around that. So I posted on my community tab a request for questions and I, two different ones. I will do an, a members only ask me anything, so something more specific for you, and then the regular weekly ask me anything. So look for those posts on my community tab and leave me a question. I might record tonight, I might record tomorrow. I'll record tonight if I have enough questions already or I might bump it by one day. Regardless, I'd love to uh, receive your questions for my Ask Me Anything vlogs. You can submit on my community tab. I wanna talk about a couple transactions and then we can talk about this team and where we're at. And um, I just did an interview with uh, Travis Prasad of CTV News Vancouver. So I'll be on uh, CTV tonight. I. I did okay. I think I could have done a little better now that I think about it, but I think you always think like that after you do something for public consumption. Why? Well, I guess technically I could do that after every single one of my vlogs. So I thought I articulated myself well. It wasn't the best I've ever done, but hopefully um, they're able to edit, what, edit it well tonight. Okay, a couple of transaction things first. Today the Canucks announced that Travis Hamnick has rejoined the team. No surprise because the Canucks are back in town and therefore Madison Bowie has been loaned to Abbotsford. I thought Bowie was very unimpressive in his two games here. This is probably why he's a fringe NHL defenseman. Not a lot of good reads, not a lot of uh, plays that stood out for the right reasons. So um, yeah, and he, the, the Bowie Hunt pair struggled yesterday for sure. Bowie was obviously playing because, uh, both, because Hamnick wasn't able to play in the States because of vaccination and because Pullman was suspended for two days. So with Pullman and Hamnick coming back, then you don't need Madison Bowie here, um, you know, with us right now. And I forgot to mention this, in activating Tyler Mott on Saturday, oh no, was it yesterday? In activating Tyler Mott to play yesterday, the Canucks also sent Jack Rathbone back to Abbotsford to make room on the 23-man roster. So now basically you're, you have your D of OE, who, no matter who plays with who, there's OEL, there's Myers, there's Hughes, there's Hamnick, there's Pullman, and there's still Burroughs um, up here right now, and Hunt. So those are your seven where Shen's injured and Rathbone's back in Abbotsford. So a couple transactions, roster transactions for you to be aware of. Okay, I, I wanna talk quickly about what's going to happen with the Canucks, if anything's going to happen with the Canucks this week. And in my live stream and in my post game last night, I, I talked about, is it going to be Travis Green? Is it going to be Jim, ben Jim Benning? And especially my live stream, I outlined how, you guys know, I like Green more than I like Benning. Benning's been here eight years. Green's only been here for five years. And as I've talked about for the past few days, do you blame Benning because of the way he's assembled the roster or do you blame Green in the way he's executed with that roster? And I think people go back and forth. Some people pick both, and which is understandable. People are frustrated right now. But for me, it was always keep green, let go of Benning. And then when the Canucks were playing poorly and not executing on special teams and, and you know turning the puck over and the best players weren't being the best players, then I thought, no, likely green, green's going to go before Benning does. But I've kind of done another 180, so I'm back uh, to the first first kind of opinion and mindset of I think it's actually going to be Benning because when, when you think about coaches Jim Benning hired Willie Desjardins and fired him he hired Travis Green and if you let Green go it, 
Is a GM allowed to basically hire three coaches? I thought you can do two because that means you can get to fire one coach. But do you get to fire two coaches? That's very rare. So that's what leads me to think if anything happens, it's actually going to be Benning as opposed to Green. Another reason is they just signed Green to a two-year contract. We don't know how much it's worth, but um, there's also an adage or an old adage saying that you don't want to be paying two guys, i.e. two head coaches, to be doing one job. That would mean if we replace Travis Green, you have to still pay Travis Green along with paying out the new guys. So yeah, you're paying for two salaries. Now, I'm not sure, admittedly, if that reasoning can extend to Jim Benning. Like, if he gets fired as a GM, does does he still get paid the remainder of his contract? He also has, you know, he's entering to his second last year. I don't know if Benning makes more than Green or if Green makes more than Benning, but um, regardless of who makes more than who, I'd be curious to see if Benning also, and if, if standard contracts for GMs are that they get paid for their, you know, for the entirety of the contract, or if that's only head coaching thing, because that might make a little bit of a difference to the always mindful of money, Francesco Accolini. You can't fire all the players. I don't think the Canucks are going to make a trade because they've already given away enough, traded away enough first round, second round, third round picks. And the prospects, it's not like we have a ton of them anymore with guys like Paul Colson and Huglander and Rathbone, well, I guess Rathbone, but most of them playing with the team already. So I, I don't think the tra- a trade is an answer. I don't think it's, it's going to be an answer or be an alternative. I think, if anything, it's going to be one of Green or Benning moving. And I guess my point today is, although I've been on the fire Green, certainly not the bandwagon, but that, that's what I thought could happen. Now that I think about it a little more and hear other people talking about it, it might actually be Benning before Green, but it might not even be Benning either. It might be simply um, trying to work their way through this because that's what the players want to do. That's what they've been talking about. So we'll see if that actually translates onto the ice. So my friends, I guess today, as we kind of wait and maybe there's going to be news, maybe there's not going to be news, but as we kind of wait in this period of, of three days between games or two days between games, it's Sunday, then, then Wednesday, when the Canucks host the Avalanche, the question is, do you think the Canucks will make a move, either green or bending or both or neither? Um, and if so, who, in your opinion, deserves to go first, so to speak? It's kind of morbid talking about or sad kind of talking about people losing their jobs. But in this performance-based, you know, results-based business, the Canucks are not performing. They are not producing results. So maybe that's that's what I'm asking you is who should get let go first and and will anyone get let go during this week leave a comment below and let me know shout out to my hero members nux fan number 29 just incredible lucas gates and andrew chang and to my hall of fame members jens 95 sim alexander chris seifert adam bluefield shannon hollingworth carol bovlander and hsm fangirl gaming thanks for your support as always and thanks to the support of all members of all levels you're listed in my video descriptions if you want to become a member of the ccc crew press the join button underneath this during my videos on the memberships tab on my YouTube channel. Subscribe if you'd like to, like this video if you'd like to, become a member of this channel if you'd like to, leave a comment down below if you'd like to. Is it bending? Is it green? Is it both? Is it neither? What do you expect to happen this week? Don't forget, my Ask Me Anything posts are up on my community tab. Make sure you leave a question for me there. And tonight, Canucks After Dark, Parker and me, we're starting a little earlier because Parker has a hockey game to go to, to play in. So we will be going 8 to 9 p.m. tonight. So Canucks After Dark, eight to nine. I hope to see you there. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. Have a great day. God bless and stay safe and stay warm in this crazy rainy weather. Go Canucks go.